All right, what's up guys, Mitch Ordidi, and we are getting into day 17 of the new player guide. So this day is just a recap day basically, um, and what to do after beating 410 Zio. So <clears throat> hopefully you guys are to the point where you beat Zio. By the time you're watching this, this is part 17, not day 17, because a lot of you will not be here on day 17. Some people are here on day 12. So everyone's gonna play at different paces, so just look at the guides again by day. Also, if you guys need a guild, um, join the guilds. You can see how active this guild is. It's the weekly reset and we're already bought our box. We have buffs going constantly. Everyone's requesting Wyvern Claws. You can see here everyone requests Wyvern Claws. So it's the most efficient guild you could possibly be in. You just won't be high guild wars, but as a new player you're not going to be able to really do guild wars anyway. So <clears throat> with that being said, make sure you do your world bots every day still. And we're going to talk about real quick expeditions are going to be ending at the end of each month so depending on when you're watching this guide you want to make sure you get your expeditions finished so whenever you're going through this you have your point value for 81 83 60 every single one you finish is 60 points unless you only have your friends do it then it's worth 80 but i would just focus on the 60 points um and you want to get all these rewards that you can you have the option to spend the premium to get fifth or spend 1500 sky stones to get extra this is technically pretty good value because of resources you get. You get these, which are hard to get, 300 of them extra. Three blue boxes is huge. That's three pieces of targeted gear you can go for. Three Mogors is big. Uh, three extra reforges of three different types. So this is technically worth it, but I wouldn't push it on newer players. Your Sky Stones are going to be pretty valuable for progression or summons. So I wouldn't really worry about that too much. So, but the way to finish these is if you guys need to just get them done, go to the level ones. Uh, if you can do level twos, you can go to level twos that are open, but in open recruitment, you can do just level ones that'll guarantee that they get finished. Level ones always get finished. Level twos have a harder time getting finished for all types. Wyvern's usually not too bad, but most of the time, if you just need to get it done real quick, just do level ones and get out of there real quick and you're good to go. So make sure that is done. One other thing is monthly reset, labyrinth reset. So if you are doing hell raid, then your labyrinth is going to reset to where you can start doing each boss again. But we're not gonna be worrying about hell raid for a while. So this is just regular raid. Once you clear queen and regular raid, you unlock hell raid. We will be working on that over the next week though and getting teams set up for that. So just know that that is all going on. And then automaton tower, if it is reset at this point, you can do it again. Just do one level higher than you've done before. So just keep working on this. This gives a ton of charms. It's going to be one of your best ways to get right side charms early game. So that, but in terms of your labyrinths, keep clearing Nixie Sanctum. You guys should be further than I am because I've been slacking on this account uh, compared to my other one at least. And then Malachus Consciousness. Once you clear Nixie, go into Malachus's. So when you're doing Labyrinth, I'm going to show this real quick and then I'm going to show all the characters. So as you're doing Labyrinth, make sure that once you clear them, you will go to the end and teleport at the spot that says the next area. So if there's a wording next to one of the places of the teleporters, you need to do that. One other tip for doing Labyrinth is if you get to, I would always go until you get to minus 50 morale. And then if you go until you lose a fight, you can click retry for zero sky stones. It'll teleport you back to right before you fought the enemy. And once you're at minus 50 morale or to a point where you can't beat enemies anymore, you can teleport to places you have already cleared. So go to any teleporter that you have not gone to before uh at this point so you can just go down to say this random teleporter we haven't crossed here make sure auto is off if you click next you can see this if you look closely you can see there's an enemy under me if there's an enemy you want to run backwards and then avoid that but if you keep teleporting you can find chests and then clear areas and if you see an enemy or a chest there's an enemy you stop so if you see on the map here there's an enemy we stop moving so we don't end up fighting that then you could teleport to the next one and then uh, see if there's anything there. There's no boss under me or a fight. And you go up here and there is one of these. You don't have to grab these. But this is a way to possibly get extra rewards for each of them. You can see there's an enemy under me. But you just do that for your labyrinth. So I'm going to go ahead and leave so it doesn't waste my token. But that is a good way to get the most out of every labyrinth. But I also messed up right here and I didn't teleport out of the last area. So always make sure when you're ending your day for lab, you're teleporting out of the last thing that has wording under it so that it op it unlocks the next area you can go to that for some reason i don't see why they still make you do that but that is a quick thing with labyrinth in terms of teams you can use the lab a morale calculator from one of my earlier guides i put that in there so you can see what your best morale team is next up uh what you should be working on after 410-10 so you need to get aiden's artifact this is a stage path of the savior it gives you the free artifact for her it will probably be what most of us use just because it's free it's a five-star artifact gives good base stats so good to do 
But if you have not done the Aiden quest, I'm not going to do the Aiden quest on this account. I'm actually going to switch accounts over to my 30 day challenge account that I did before. Um, but I'm going to wait a couple more days, show you how to spend what current resources you have. And before I switch over. So uh, make sure you finish all the Aiden missions. And then once you finish all the Aiden missions, you will unlock Aiden. Um, I can probably show unlocking Aiden still. I think I have the video where I finished her uh, from my other account. So I'll still show that portion of once you're done how to like activate her. But once you're done, you just click Awaken Aiden down here. And then you'll be able to switch to whichever one you want. So if you're curious about, I finished all missions, how do I change her? You'll click down here, there'll be the four options and you can just switch her. So now once you have done all that, you need to go back to chapter three if you have not already done this and you should be farming um, all the gear sets in here. So you want to make sure that you farm all the HP gear from in here. That is going to be six more and amazing pieces of HP gear. Second, you need to be going and doing the other set. This is going to give you an additional PVE set, or it could be good in PVP even. So uh, the destruction set. So it's a T80 destruction set. The stats could possibly be used for a PVP character, but this gear right here is very worth getting too. So both of these are worth doing. Next up from there, if it is a buff event, so those of you will be watching this video at different times. If it's a buff event ever during this period, um, that you do not have the extra new player buffs. If you're past new player buffs and there's a buff event, you should be working on finishing your specialty changes. So Falconer Clary, you want to go make sure that her skill tree is uh, finished. You want to make sure you have Hazel and Raz finished for the 1010 boss fight if you haven't finished that yet. And you're going to be wanting to work on Arrowell. If you have Arrowell, you want to farm Light Runes for her. Um, but any specialty change that we have done, you're going to be wanting to work on. Now, characters that we are going to be building next... Um, make sure you have your Vivian geared up. We're going to be making a Banshee team tomorrow. I'm going to be showing one-shot examples for those of you that pulled Biken, and I'm going to be showing uh, regular farming examples. So we've already got all but one character of the team set up, but I'm going to give you multiple options so you can decide what you want for your extra uh, character. I'm probably going to use Euphine. You can pretty much use any other grass unit on top of the three characters I have set up for it, but... Um, I will be giving you a list of characters tomorrow in terms of getting our regular Banshee team, but I will also show you guys that are wanting to one-shot it how to one-shot it if you did get Biken. And I might show another one-shot if I can find one of different characters that we would all have, but I know not everyone's going to have Biken. So farming Banshee regularly is fine for newer players. It's not going to be a big deal. So I'm also currently working, before I show all the characters and their stats, I am also currently working on a video. I know a lot of you guys are worrying about gear right now. Farming Wyvern, I've got you guys set up for your Wyvern team. You're trying to craft and you have no idea what kind of pieces you should be aiming for. Um, you're just a little bit lost on that. That's normal, don't worry. I'm gonna be releasing five videos showing every character that is worth building in the game and build examples for them. So, and I'm gonna show every piece of gear and all the substats. And they're picture videos. These are taking me forever because I have to take like seven pictures and then put them all together and then take seven more pictures, put them all together. And I have to do that for every character and I'm doing multiple builds for characters. So every video is taking me, uh, I mean, every video is going to take me like a full day to finish. It is a ton of work, but that is what I'm currently working on. That is why these videos have been slower. Um, but th that's the video series that I think is going to give you guys the most help in terms of understanding gear having a build example for every character that you could possibly have. I have every character on my main account. So I'm going in, I'm going to show you everything I possibly can try to make it easy. I'll give like standard baseline stats that you can aim for. And the thing is you just look at my build examples and roll the gear and get as close as you can to my stats. If you can't exactly hit the stats on it, that's fine. You're not going to be able to, you're a new player. Um, but if you get at least close, that means the character will be usable and you can use them until you get better gear, switch off your worst or like, your gear that isn't great as you get a better piece, switch it out and slowly upgrade your characters over time. But the point of it is to get you to where you have the baseline of your units built, know what uh, gear to aim for for them. And then we can slowly improve our accounts over the time of playing the game. So the thing with Epic 7 is you're constantly improving. And that's one of the things that feels so good. Once you get it to a point where you feel like a character is finished, that feels so, so good. And then you can show everyone the final result of whatever you ended up farming for. It's a really cool, really cool thing. So. Here are the characters I currently have geared. Here's my adventure Raz. Bomb model Kana I have taken off of gear for right now. She is going to be an expedition unit. 
But for currently, I do not need her. I'm using Mercedes in that slot. I'm going to end up using Mercedes and Kana for uh, Grass Expeditions. We're also going to use Kana for a couple other things. We'll get gear on her again eventually. But Mercedes is more important to put gear on because she can be used in your Guild Wars and uh, Arena and then on defense teams for both. Now, Mascot Hazel. Uh, I have gear still on her. I'm going to end up putting her as my character for Grass Expeditions. And we're going to use her in a couple lab things. But so we have the free speed set and I'm going to do the two immunity pieces for her. And this ends up giving you a free soul weaver set. That's pretty solid. So buy the immunity and the uh, boots for that. Here is my shoe. She's on counter set from the free set. And then I crafted two pieces to make her work. So not perfect, but she's very, very usable. Here's the cigarette for wyvern. So my wyvern team is like 95% win rate. I lose a one run per 15, sometimes two runs per 15. But overall, it's very, very consistent now. So here's the crow's up for front take wyvern. I was on a plus nine necklace, but this is working fine. So I haven't bothered upgrading yet. Next up, falconer clary. We are going to be putting gear on her. There's actually a good chance we're going to move mascot hazel's gear down to falconer clary just to have her usable for banshee tomorrow. So Falconer Clary will probably be on that speed set, but we'll go over crafting and we'll be able to build a lot more characters over the next couple days. So just hold on to your crafting materials if you have them and don't know what you're doing with them yet. Just just save them. So here's the Spectre Cebria. She's usually the hard carry for all content right now. So now that we're done with story, though, there's not a whole lot that we have to worry about. We can go through and finish clearing all the story stuff, get all the three stars on stages if we want. But otherwise, that'll always be there. And we have uh, the ability to fully unlock Aiden from being chapter or beating the end chapter. Next up, we have our Destina. If you do the four piece free um, set and then you can also get the these two pieces from your arena shop. They are pretty. Ch I think they're a little bit more expensive. I think they cost 720. But this is an Effectress ring that is really nice to have. And these boots are also Effectress set. So these are a good way to round out a set on one of your characters. These two pieces are nice. Next up, Free Spirit Tearia. I'm probably going to end up taking her gear off and putting it on Kana. We don't need Free Spirit Tearia anymore. She's not really going to be too useful in just about anything. So we can go ahead and most likely ungear her and just move her gear up to our uh, Kana. Next up, our Tamarin. Still not fully leveled on right side gear, but this worked, this worked all the way through clearing all content in the game. Terranor Guard for Wyvern. Uh, if, you're, if you do not have Terranor Guard built, maybe your Furious will look like this. So I'm using the Artifact Junkyard Dog on him. If you do not have this, if you weren't playing during the Guilty Gear event, just still do use Daydream Joker or the 5-star Artifact. If you happen to get super lucky and get it, that is um, Cradle of Life. It took me a second. Cradle of Life has basically the same thing, but a higher chance to proc a two-turn debuff. So if you have that, otherwise just use Daydream Joker on him. You're fine. Here's the movie for Wyvern. And then our Aiden, we haven't touched yet, but your Aiden, actually Aiden's going to end up going on that Free Spirit Tyria gear most likely. So Speed Boots attack set for your Aiden will be fine for now until you can get a better build. We are going to be building Vivian for our Banshee team tomorrow. So make sure you at least have her five star, five star Awakened. And then other than that, we have nothing else geared. But this is where we're to the point where we need to start deciding on what characters to build next. So once we get the rest of our PvE team set up over the next two days, we need to be looking into what characters we have that are good and worth building. So um, like I said, I'm probably going to be using Euphine for my Banshee team. For my, I'm not going to one-shot, I'm just going to use her. Because I would just use Ram, uh, Ram. If you have Ram, you can use her instead. But I know a lot of you that are watching this guide series later. You won't have her. She was part of an event. So I'm going to not use her for this. Uh, just but if you do have ram she is a great fourth option so you can go ahead and level her up if you haven't already and use her but i will be using you fiend but there's a lot of other characters that i'll get, go over tomorrow as to what you could build up for banshee so other than that it's we're i'm going to be releasing those videos as to like what the meta characters are in the game and giving build examples for those if you're willing to wait for them save your crafting materials so you know a, or get a better idea of what kind of gear looks good because there will be a billion pieces of gear in that video for each different kind of build. So going through them all, you'll be like, oh, okay, so this can be used on this. And then it, it should help you a ton. So just be a little patient on that. I'm working very hard on it. Actually, I want to make those like the go-to guides for understanding gear as well as knowing how to build each of the characters in the game. Or at least having some kind of base guideline for learning to build characters. But that's all I got for this video. Like I said, it's just a recap. Very, very simple. Um, there's not a whole lot else to go over. Like I said, finish expeditions for the month if you can. Um, otherwise, I'll do a couple summons real quick while I think if there's anything else I wanted to cover. I do not believe there is. So, no luck there. And let's see if we can get ourselves a Sermia. No, we cannot. 
and you got another three star awesome so i do have 605 bookmarks i'm going to be doing a story summon probably for senya for my account but i will go over that tomorrow we'll do a bunch of summons in the video as well and then you guys can see um, I'll go over a couple of characters I'd suggest getting from Story Summon. If you want to summon, if you have the currency, I personally wouldn't summon uh, right away. Make sure there's no events coming up or anything. Right now, as of making this video, Anniversary is starting in two days. So I want to save all my bookmarks just in case Anniversary has a really good banner. Otherwise, if you're playing at a different time, just check and see if there's anything going on in the game. If not, then you can just go to Story Summon and summon away. But otherwise, that's all I got for this video. If you have any comments or questions as to what you want to be doing or what you should be doing, comment them down below. Um, or join the Discord. Discord link down below too. You can ask anything in there. If you have anything you want me to cover in these videos that you still don't understand, let me know in some capacity and I will try to make sure I go over it in the next video. But it's been Mitch Rodidi and I will see you all tomorrow in tomorrow's video. Yeah. All right. Peace out. <laughs>